Boba Fett has lost possession of Han Solo, who has been frozen in carbonite. He stopped on Nar Shadda, the smuggler's moon, to get help fixing Solo's carbonite casket. While off fighting in an arena and becoming the champion, may I add, Solo was taken. The hunt is on. No one steals from Boba Fett and lives. This is my review of the comic series War of the Bounty Hunters Alpha Number 1, today on Star Wars Fanatic. Now, I must warn you, there will be spoilers for this issue ahead, so if you don't want to be spoiled, back out now. If you're new to the channel, go on and hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to stay up to date on all my Boba Fett, Mandalorian, and general Star Wars content. We all know the story of Boba Fett helping Darth Vader capture Han Solo on Cloud City. We also know he was given Solo to take to Jabba the Hutt for the reward on the smuggler turned rival hero's head. But what happened between those events? Well, it wasn't as easy as we were all led to believe in the original movies. This is the second issue of the War of the Bounty Hunter comic series. In the first issue, Han Solo's carbonite casket was in danger of killing Solo. The process was unstable and would turn Solo to goo if it wasn't fixed soon. A quick stop to an old friend of Boba Fett's, Dexter Jester, puts the bounty hunter in a position of having no credits to pay for the repairs. In exchange, he agrees to fight in the arena on Nar Shadda and use the winnings to pay Dex. In classic Boba Fett fashion, he does just that. In fact, he becomes the champion by fighting in disguise with black armor and going by the name of his deceased father, Jango. When he returns, Dexter is dead and Solo has been taken. That brings us to the newest issue. Again, I'll warn you, there are spoilers ahead. Why do I include spoilers? Because some fans don't read the comics, but there is a huge reveal at the end that ties in another Star Wars film to this sequence of events. So please stick around, especially for those who don't read the comics. Boba Fett speaks with a Zabrak barkeep, and his first words Boba tells him, somebody's going to die. He didn't yell it. He didn't show visible anger. He was very Boba Fett about it. But while he was chatting with the bartender, he noticed a reflection. A reflection of someone approaching him from behind with a blaster drawn. Boba spins around and shoots the unknown assailant. When the bartender asked who that was, Boba had no idea and said it was probably someone just trying to make a name for himself. Boba leaves the bar and returns to his ship, the Slave One. As he nears the ship that once belonged to his father, Jango Fett, a charge explodes from the side of the hull. Boba isn't injured, but he is knocked back. As he is down on the ground, Zuckus and 4LOM reveal themselves. As he is cornered, he manages to use the Slave One's forward cannons to escape. Zuckus is hanging from the platform, and 4LOM is severed in half. Zuckus begins to beg Boba not to kill him, that he can tell Boba his future. In another classic moment for Boba Fett, he tells Zuckus he's not interested and kicks him, letting Zuckus fall to his death. He then walks over to 4LOM and severs his head. When he returns to the Slave One, he connects the head to the Slave One's computer and the droid bounty hunter reveals there has been a bounty placed on Boba's head, an open bounty, not just to the biggest hitters in the galaxy either, but anyone that can bring him in, dead or alive. The frozen Captain Solo is a plus, but is not needed. Boba then travels to Tatooine and discovers it was Jabba the Hutt himself that put the hit out on him. However, Jabba is away on business. Business that guarantees the possession of Han Solo through a bidding war with an unknown organization. Okay, so that's the gist of the story. Boba Fett has had Han Solo stolen from him, and he is on a mission to retrieve him. Then, it turns into Boba Fett being the one being hunted by every two-bit in the galaxy. The whole time they showed the unknown organization, the female leader's face was covered, hidden in a shadow of her hood, almost Sith-like. Only her attire was light in color. Now, once again, spoilers ahead. Every time they showed the shadowy figure, I had my suspicions as to whom it was. At first, I thought Asajj Ventress, but I quickly dismissed her as she was killed during the Clone Wars, and this was about two decades after that. Then it clicked immediately, and I thought, yep. And my suspicions were right. The Crimson Dawn was making a return under new leadership, Kira. 
She had stolen Han Solo and knew that everyone in the galaxy would pay handsomely for him. From the Huts to the Empire to Dr. Aphra to every bounty hunter, Solo was going to put Crimson Dawn back on the map as a leader in the crime world. Kira also speaks with Jabba the Hut about handing Solo over to him as a gesture of good faith. In the past, Jabba had dealt with the Crimson Dawn, but it was always through Darth Maul's leadership. Now, Jabba thinks Maul is dead and looks like there will be plans to double-cross this restructured crime syndicate. Now, for my own thoughts on this series so far. Well, first of all, I will need to buy a lot of other comics to keep up with the full story. When it was announced as a crossover, my mind went straight to a negative place. Crossover? Like MCU and Star Wars was crossing over? I can't stand that thought. I like MCU and I love Star Wars, but they don't belong together. I'm glad that thought was quickly subverted. No, what crossover really means in this sense is that this isn't going to be a standalone series. In fact, Dr. Aphra, the main Star Wars title, the Bounty Hunter series, and the latest Darth Vader series are all intertwined with this. Let's not forget, Solo, a Star Wars story. So to get a full picture of what's happening, I'll probably have to read all of those other comics. Cracking my knuckles, let's do it. What I really like about this issue is that Boba Fett was entirely Boba Fett throughout it. They stuck to his character so well. When Zuckus revealed himself as the one who planted the charge on the Slave One, Boba felt his father had been disrespected. And he voiced that. I'd say half the reason he killed Zuckus and 4LOM was because of the minor bruise they put on his father's ship. So, for those who say he didn't have a tight bond nor learn anything Mandalorian from Django, the proof is right there. Family and clan are part of the Resonaire, and he holds the family he had in the highest regards. I can't say I'm surprised Kira has made a return, but it makes sense. She and Solo were hot for each other, but she proved to be an opportunist. She was more interested in being a crime lord than someone settling down with a smuggler. I'm on the edge of my seat, though, to see if there are plans of filling in the gaps of her story from Solo A Star Wars Story up until this issue some 10 to 12 years later. The art style is a bit different from the Alpha issue last month. The last month the art was a bit darker and grittier. This month it's lighter colors and smoother. Not that either are a bad thing, just a noticeable difference. The comic series is a welcome addition to the character of Boba Fett. When Boba Fett was created, George Lucas meant for him to be a character that ended after he had served his purpose. What was his purpose? To deliver Solo to Jabba the Hutt. But he didn't anticipate the popularity of the strong, silent Fett among fans. Even with his short screen time and few lines, he was an instant Star Wars icon. Nobody doesn't know who Boba Fett is, even non-fans, for the most part. Boba Fett became so popular that George Lucas allowed stories to be created about him in the expanded universe. Stories that matched up with what he had believed was capable all along. Then the expanded universe was deemed legends, and we were back to square one. There became news about a Boba Fett movie a couple of times. However, those fell through, and we were back to square one yet again. Then Boba appeared in The Mandalorian with an announcement that he was getting his own short series. Boba fans everywhere celebrated. Now we have this comic series that is all about Boba Fett. He is getting the fleshed out story that he deserved all along. Now he just needs to utter the words, I am Mandalorian. But I'm patient. Even if he doesn't do it in this series, I'm sure it will come in the Boba Fett series, The Book of Boba Fett. Sorry, I got off topic for a moment. I have a hard time containing myself when there's so much new Boba Fett material, so I will rate this one the same as the last issue. If I had three thumbs, they would all be up. The art is amazing, the dialogue is better than some of the other Star Wars comics out there, and the reveal of Kira has made me excited about a possible fill-in for her own story. Let's just hope Han catches word that she used his body as bait to rope in all the other crime organizations. Don't forget to check out my Boba Fett and Jango Fett fan fictions. The way this story is shaping up, it seems my own stories are falling right in place with this one. But what did you think of this issue? Are you excited to see more? Are you a fan of Boba Fett? 
let me know in the comments below. I really enjoy hearing from you. And if you are new to the channel or haven't committed yet, go on and hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications to stay up to date on all my Boba Fett, Mandalorian, and general Star Wars discussions, theories, and fan fictions. Also hit the thumbs up to show your everlasting and undying love for the hard work I put into this video and every other one. Also, channel memberships are live, so for just a little bit extra a month, you can help support the channel. All proceeds do go back into the channel to make it a little bit better. Thank you for watching, and remember, this is the way. The only way.